Hi there. I'm Dr. Shiroko Sokic, and I'm so delighted to be here tonight with my friend, Dr. Marcel Pick, a, actually nurse practitioner, Marcel Pick, who is an OBGYN nurse practitioner and the host of the upcoming Adrenal Solutions Summit that starts tomorrow. And I'm super excited to talk to her about it. I'm one of the guests, but also she has a lot of other amazing guests. Welcome, Marcel. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here. Lots of information to share. Love you. Thank you. Um, tell me, tell us a little bit about yourself and what what has you doing this summit at this point in time. Sure. So I've been doing women's health for over 37 years, and I've been teaching functional medicine. I teach for the Institute of Functional Medicine, the Hormone Module, and I've been really interested in helping women understand um, about their health. Um, I'm uh, Harvard trained with Boston College combination. I've been on Dr. Oz, I've been on PBS, I've been many different uh, magazines, and I'm really ready to teach people about wellness and that our genes are not our destiny. And one of the ways to do that, especially with all the stress that we have right now, is um, to help people understand how do we deal with this stress because it has physical manifestations and that's on the adrenals in particular. So it's a heartfelt desire to help so many people that are struggling right now. Awesome. So what do you mean our genes are not our destiny? How does that address? Yeah, so so many people come in asking me the question, well, you know, I've got the genetics. My mother had diabetes, my sister has diabetes, and my father was diabetic. And my response to that is that's true. You know, you probably have the predisposition to get it. But the food that we eat, the thoughts that we think, the environment of nutrients that we put in our body, that determines if the genes get turned on or off. And we have much more power over that than our you know, genetics does if we choose to take that step to change things. And that's exciting, you know? Combination acupuncture and dietary changes and supplements can be a game changer for people. It can, yeah. How is the stress right now affecting a lot of your clients' adrenals? Like uh, what are you seeing in your practice? Oh my God, what is it not affecting? You know, that's the part that's so hard is, I think generally our thought was for years, you know, it happened, it's stressful, don't worry about it, just kind of think it away. And that doesn't work. So the unfortunate part is a lot of people don't understand that our stress response, if we're too much in that response of stress, what happens is that our thyroid doesn't work as well because we get something called uh, reverse T3 goes up and the breaks on the genes um, on the uh, thyroid occurs. It causes huge hormonal dysregulation. You know, a lot of women know that that have periods when they have a lot of stress, their periods become irregular. And we also know that it affects our immune system. So we have more autoimmune issues in related to that. It affects our thinking, it affects our digestive system. Um, and it affects our overall well-being, and it certainly affects our sleep as well. So all these pieces together can cause us to have significant issues. And, you know, for so long, we thought that stress is just stress, you know, don't worry about it. But now we see that that's not true. You know, our stories, our histories of, you know, a lot of trauma or stress also can predict increased risk, believe it or not, of heart disease, stroke, cancers, um, and kidney problems. So there's a lot of connections, but it's also something you can do something about. That's the part that's so exciting. Mm -hmm. But you have to recognize that it does cause some issues. So you're saying that when you're super stressed, your thyroid gets affected. And is that one of the reasons that people are gaining weight during this time? It is. It's part of it, but it's not all thyroid, unfortunately. So, um, yes, there are many women who don't convert properly to T3. But I, what I more often see is there's a break on the thyroid called reverse T3, and that goes up with cortisol. The other thing that happens is that our cortisol goes up, and it's an amazing thing. We can't live without cortisol. So don't think it's a terrible thing. It's not. We can't live without it. But the reality is that if you have too much for too long, the body goes into a defense stance and it protects itself. So every calorie you take in gets stored as either fat or you can go down, down, down on your calories and nothing happens. So people don't lose weight. 
they don't have energy, but they're thinking to themselves, I can't exercise anymore. I can't lose weight. You know, what's going on here? I've cut my calories back. It's not about calories in, calories out. In fact, many of those people, what I'll suggest for them is that they go on keto. They actually have more fat, get into ketosis for one to two months. Then the body will kind of get back out of insulin resistance because that's what happens and start losing weight. Bit about the speakers for your summit and sure oh my goodness i have lots of them you for one um and uh jj virgin is a speaker josh axe is a speaker um dr josh uh, uh david jockers is a speaker nathan crane um we, I, what i tried to do is to have as much variety as possible i have two pediatricians that are going to be talking about um, the fact that 80% of our children right now are depressed. You know, what do we do about it? They've got solutions in there. I also have a physician who's a urologist who talks about male uh, 2.0 and, and really means, you know, what's happening to males right now in regards to their testosterone levels. The average man, their testosterone levels have gone down 50% 50 per, 50 in the last 20 years. So that's significantly affecting their muscle, their heart, and certainly their sex drive. I have um, Datis who's talking about, he's brilliant talking about how um, important it is to get into ketosis if you wanted to lose weight. Dr. Jeffrey Bland, who's my big mentor, is talking about kind of adrenals. Um, Dr. Filomeno uh, Trindati is talking about what are the stages of adrenal issues. And I also have Mark Newman, who's talking about how do you do testing? You know, how do you do testing for hormones and how do you do testing for adrenals? So I really tried to cover it all. And we have somebody who's an expert in melatonin talking about he uses a high amount of melatonin, up to 200 milligrams a night, and talks about the science that's, you know, kind of correlated with having more uh, melatonin and some of the things that can make a difference. I have Robin Benson, who's talking about anti-aging and regenerative medicine. I have Dr. Trevor Gates talking about skin and what you can do, Nalini Shinkov talking about cancer prevention and where cancer comes in with uh, with all of this. So I really tried to have the, a broad perspective about what happens if we have a lot of stress, which we all do now, and what we can do about it. Um, so there's many, many things that we can do. Uh, Deanna Minnick, who's Dr. Deanna Minnick, who's an unbelievable uh, nutritionist, and she talks about what kind of foods that we should eat. We've also got Liz Lipsky, Dr. Liz Lipsky, talking about the gut and the microbiome, uh, Vincent Pedro talking about the gut as well. So I tried to round it out from the gut to the immune system to female hormones to thyroid with Alan Christensen talking about Hashimoto's and what we know about iodine and the connection. So there's lots of fun-filled information to get people uh, the information that we also desperately need right now to stay as healthy as we can. So yeah, actually one of the things that I've, I've been hearing with Dr. Christensen is, which I think is really interesting is uh, about iodine toxicity. Right. And one of my patients actually came in uh, like a couple of weeks ago and she had a really swollen goiter and I was trying to, I hadn't seen her in a while. And so I was, and, and her husband does all of her supplements and stuff. And so he was shared with me this huge list of stuff that she was taking. And this is before I heard Dr. Christensen's talk, but um, I was like, how much seaweed is she eating? And she was having seaweed in her shake in the morning. She was taking all of this food that was really high in iodine and supplements that had iodine indirectly like seaweed and chlorella and spirulina. And so I said, well, why don't we start with you just cutting this out? Because it was just a start, but within a week, her thyroid shrank back down to normal. Wow. And, and then I, I read the thing that about Dr. Christensen's talk and I was like, oh my gosh, that mm -hmm. is, you know, yeah. something that I had thought of very much, but mm -hmm. it's a significant issue for people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was just one example of the things you could learn on your summit. Um, uh, I'm just going to talk about my talk since almost absolutely nobody, please do almost nobody talks about Chinese medicine and acupuncture and and in Chinese medicine you know the adrenals are ruled by your kidneys which regulates your overall sense of having energy 
and it regulates your physical brain and your hearing and the emotion of fear and your low back and your knees and all of those things are connected to your adrenals. And one of the things that I love so much about Chinese medicine is how it uh, has a broader picture of what's going on in your body and how everything is connected. And so you should definitely tune in for my talk, which is next Sunday, a week from today, to uh, learn about how Chinese medicine and can help you, one, understand your own body, and two, uh, help you heal when you're feeling overwhelmed and stressed without necessarily taking a lot of stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, so uh, tell us one other, like, little juicy tip on uh, on how to deal with stress in these crazy times. Sure. So, I mean, there's a number of things you can do. And one of the things that I did in this summit that I've never seen done before is after each speaker, I tried to sum up their information so that you can actually get the, the points at the end of the conversation as well. And the part that's so important to know is that now's the time to eat as well as you can, even though it feels really difficult to exercise you know, your mind and also understand that we will get through this. What we'll look like on the other end, I don't know that but having an understanding that we will, you know, be better on the other side of this kind of uh, experience we've had for almost a year. And um, that we can heal the adrenals. That's the beautiful part about the body that you know so well. Um, uh, and we can do things that can actually make us healthier and stronger by paying attention to what's going on in our body. And I think a lot of people don't know that. We kind of think about, you know, I'm getting older and that's bound to happen. And I just don't have that philosophy. It's really more about what can you learn from this experience? You know, I, I have a lot of patients that have come in and said to me, this has been something that I needed because it made me stop and listen. And I'm paying more attention to myself. I'm, I'm, you know, starting to kind of really look at what I need to do for myself in a different way. And that's, isn't that really what it's all about sometimes is that we need that space to take a listen. Yeah. Well, that's actually part of what I have felt in, in my own life has been helpful during these times, uh, has actually been spending more time at home. Mm -hmm. I actually had to quarantine last week because uh, I got indirectly exposed to somebody who had COVID and I didn't want my, to expose my patients. So right. I had to close my office. And so I was only doing telemedicine for a few days, but, but it was interesting to just be, you know, like so many people have been locked up for the last mm -hmm. months and mm -hmm. many of my patients and, you know, living alone and, and, and not having a lot of other people around, uh, can cause so much stress in and of itself. And so I thought about that because I only spent a week, you know, where I wasn't exposed to anybody because um, I went to the office for a few of the days. But um, it's, it's challenging to find your way through that, through that when you're alone and, or when, you're, when you have a lot of family at home and you can't get away to be alone. And how do you find peace? And how do you find what's going on? And, and what I found for myself is looking deeply at my own self and at the things that drive me. And another thing that has been really, really super helpful is connecting to love and connecting to either your higher self or to something that you love. So that when, when you're experiencing love in any way, it doesn't have to be with a partner. It can be a pet or mm -hmm. a friend or even a painting that you like doing or, or something that you connect to love. And, and then that helps something grow inside of you, which will help reduce the stress. Mm -hmm. The hormone for love is oxytocin. Do you have somebody speaking about oxytocin too? I don't. You know, I, I got shut off in terms of 51 speakers. It was already too many. It was like, you know, I wanted all these things. But anyway, yeah. So. So we'll just talk a little about oxytocin here then. All right, then. Let's do that. Oxytocin is the love hormone. It's the hormone that comes from connection to love. And 
and it's sort of the counter to cortisol. So cortisol is the stress hormone. And as Marcel said, you need cortisol in order to handle stress, but you also need connection and love and, and peace. And if you can find a balance between those, then you can manage stress more effectively. And oxytocin has actually been used as a hormone to help people with PTSD, mm -hmm. to help people who have had um, various traumas in their lives, and in order to be able to reconnect after they've had that level of stress. So, um, yeah. You know, there's also um, a number of meditations that you can do as well that really connect you to your own love for yourself. And I think that in general, for me, women in my practice, that's the hardest thing for them is self-love. Uh, they're great at giving it to everybody else, you know, taking care of everybody else's needs. But when it comes to them, it's a hard one. And it's so important just to really kind of love on yourself in that way, if you will. So absolutely true. Totally. Absolutely. Well, what is your suggestion to our audience today besides watching the summit, which the link is? right here uh scrolling across the bottom of the page so um click on that link and sign up for this summit and uh the doctor or marcel tell us one more suggestion for um i think the important part also right now is to not bombard yourself with the news and to really help oneself look at fear because fear is something that makes us unhealthy being realistic, being safe is a whole different story, but being really fearful doesn't really do a lot for ourselves. And find ways that really make you happy. You know, tiny little things that you might be able to do every single day for yourself. Um, even if it's, you know, when you're, if you have small children, reading a book to them and just really connecting with their hearts, connecting with a partner if you have that, or an animal or nature. You know, I've been going out every day for at least an hour and I do a walking meditation. But, and I, I'm also a dancer and I have my little bubble that I dance, but finding something you love every single day, even now, is going to be very, very important and helpful. Totally. And changes your body, changes your cortisol. It totally does. So, well, thank you so much for being here. I think I'm just, I'm thinking there might actually be some comments. So hold on, let me just see. Sure. Ah, no, they're just sending love. Thank you, Daniel and, and Lindsay Berkson. Thank you so much for leaving a comment. We appreciate it. And we're going to wrap up in just a second. And thank you so much for joining me today, Marcel. I My pleasure. Thank you. thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it very much. My total pleasure. Have a great evening. Yeah, you too.